this is the lab setup. Uh, finally moving away from the vertical video I had in the last setup. So I have a K-type thermal couple meter. As you can see here. Got one going down into the heat sink, trying to get its temperature. One held on to the MOSFET with some uh, blue tack type material. The power feed going into the MOSFET is done with 10 gauge silicone wire. Um, unfortunately, the only maiden connector I had is using this 10, uh, 12 gauge. So it gets kind of hot. Connector here is only rated for 80 amps anyways. Uh, eight gauge feeding that. And then that is fed into by some big size wire, uh, some sort of welding. I think it's three aught or something like that. Not sure. Doesn't get hot, only doing 100 amps through it, so not a big deal. Uh, power tech, or power supply is a mass tech 100 amp 30 volt. The power supply is a bit on the squealy side, sounds like a stuck pig when it's on, but performs well. Just has a bit of the coil squeal, a bit of the coil squeal. And uh, sending 12 volts to the fan and to the fan down here on the computer heatsink that is acting as my heatsink for the MOSFET. Goes directly to the gate to turn it on. That's an IRFP4568 sitting on there with no insulator between its backside and the heatsink. So it is an optimal thermal path with just the right amount of thermal paste applied very thinly. Try and get the maximum uh, surface area contact out of it with no gaps. 6-32 screw and a washer holding it down, not over tightened. And that is the test setup for performing thermal testing on the MOSFETs. All right, testing out an IRFP 4568. Gonna run 98 amps through it. That's the maximum my power supply is capable of. Going to see where it initializes to, or what it, the temperature stabilizes at. I do have a problem with the power feed wires going to it overheating. So I have to shut it down. They're getting up to about 170 on the 10 gauge and the connector that I'm using to make is only rated for 80 amps. And uh, I guess the solder joint's not very good because it's high resistance. So here we go. Or like uh, the press channel and here we go. Right now it's at uh, 29 Celsius on the case, right here. And we're gonna put maximum current to it starting now. All right, roll it up, we're sitting at 98 amps. We're at 35, 65 70 
about two minutes into it. You can see the leg temperature or the case temperature right by the source legs at 175 Celsius. It's probably the resistance in the bond wires going to the die. 72 Celsius. Seventy three, still climbing, leveling off a bit here. Seventy four Celsius, so seventy five is my target. Then I'm going to let it cool down to fifty and hit it again and see how quickly it cool it warms back up. There we go, seventy five Celsius, shutting off the current. Seventy, sixty-five, sixty, fifty-five, fifty, 65, 60, and current back on. These wires are not liking me. Good thing they're rated for 200 Celsius, because they're pretty damn close to it. 60 Celsius. Seventy. All right, remove the current, let it cool. Sixty-five. Sixty. Turning it back on, see how it goes from sixty. That's how long it took to go back from 55 just to get back to 60. 65. I'm going to turn it off at 70 and let it cool. I'm going to call that a wrap. As the wires are very toasty. It's my hottest temperature here. It's up there, 175. Try to move the higher temperature. Let's take it up to 200, see if we can get a reading. All right, shutting it off to let it cool down. Temperature drops real quick on it with this heat sink. The heat sink's sitting at 37 degrees. It takes a long time to heat up that chunk of copper with the fan blowing on it. 50 degrees on the case. I'll let it get back down to probably 30 degrees and then I'll stop this video. Thirty eight degrees. There is a disparity between the thermal couple and what you see here on the flare. So I'm just calling it out so I know. Thirty five I'm run by the K type thermal couple as that's what my previous experiments were based on. Thirty four 33, 
32. I'm going to call it right there. Back down to 40 according to FLIR. And 31.5 on the thermal couple.